Hey everybody, it's Thomas Wynn Railway, and as the title of the video suggests, we're going to take a look at the evolution of Thomas Wynn Railway packaging through the years. We're going to start all the way back in 1992 when the Thomas Wynn Railway line was first introduced, and we're going to work our way up to the present version of Thomas the Tank Engine in wooden form. So, without further ado, I guess we'll get started. There are 13 different versions of Thomas that I have in their boxes, and each box is a little bit different because um, the Thomas Wynn Railway line has grown and progressed and evolved over the years. Basically, you'll quickly notice um, the major changes that happen with the packaging and with the boxes, and basically this video is just designed to highlight that. So, a quick note, since this video is going to be focusing on the packaging, most notably the artwork, and things that make um, each box stand out. I won't be focusing too much on the individual engines. I'll make some comments here and there about how the change, how, excuse me, how the engines have changed over the years. But the main focus of this video is basically we're going to be looking at how the packaging has changed and basically how we went from this to this. So let's get started with the 1992 style of packaging. This is from the very first year that the Thomas Wynn Railway line was introduced. A very creative man named Roy Wilson and the people of the Thomas the Tank Engine TV show basically teamed up and formed the first version of Thomas the Tank Engine in wooden form. So this style of packaging is very unlike anything we are going to see um, throughout the rest of the video. It has a very... Um, what I would call a very artwork inspired um, packaging here. The illustration looks like something you would see in the Railway series, honestly. Um, a note here, um, there's a little Shining Time Station advertisement because at the time, uh, Thomas the Tank Engine was incorporated into a show called Shining Time Station. So that's how basically American audiences um, learned about Thomas the Tank Engine. The back of this box is very plain. In fact, there's really nothing going on here. Um, I'll be doing a separate video about this specific Thomas because it is a special one. Um, I mentioned a man named Roy Wilson. He was basically the creator and founder of the Thomas Wynn Railway line. And I'm fortunate enough to have this very special Thomas here that is not only signed on the back, as you saw there, I believe it's signed on the bottom as well. So I'll be doing a special individual uh, video on this box and on this engine um, here soon. But for the purposes of this video, let's just focus on the box artwork. So like I said, I think the artwork is very railway series inspired. It looks like something you would see in a classic, let's say, you know, 1950s, 1960s Thomas and Friends book, which is when the majority of the railway series stories were written. Up top here, you can see it says, for Thomas's friends, ages two years and up. Now the wording of that is particularly unique and just so pay attention um, and see how that changes as um, we move throughout the years. So overall, this is a very simple design. You could definitely tell this is, I mean, if you had to guess based on the other versions of the Thomas packaging we're going to see, you could probably guess that this is the first version because although it's incredibly detailed, there's nothing too fancy about it. There's a little sign on the bottom here that says, Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends made of wood. So it is, um, characterizing and highly stylizing the fact that it's made out of wood. And pretty much on the back here on the bottom, there's very limited detail, very limited information. This is what I would call a uh, bare to the bone type of design. So that is the 1992 version. It was sold for a couple of years after. Um, people like to debate the specific years of when the packaging was used, but basically 1992, 1993, maybe even to, into 1994, if you're generous. So this is basically what Thomas the Tank Engine looked like when he was put out on store shelves for the first time in wooden form. Personally, the packaging to me is a little bit weird considering how boring and plain it gets in later years. So I guess I should be happy that it's highly detailized like this, but um, it just, it looks weird um, compared to what's coming next. So that is the 1992 packaging. Let's take a look at, um, again, the years are a little bit up in the air. I'd say 1993 to around 1996. I'll start by saying this is my favorite version of Thomas packaging. There's something just really nice about it that fits in super well with the Thomas theme. 
So already you can see some major changes. We've kind of gone, whereas, you know, this, the main color of this packaging here would be green. We've kind of transitioned into more of a blue packaging. And I'm not just saying that because Thomas is a blue engine. I really, really like the design on the back of this cardboard base here. Um, it's a picture of Thomas, Annie, and Clarabelle puffing through the countryside on Sodor. It just looks really nice. And again, it looks like something you'd see in a book. Um, this right here is nice, but it doesn't feel extremely Sodor to me. You know, I could see this as almost like a painting you'd see in a museum, whereas this is extremely Sodor to me. So up here in the top, we see uh, Britt Alcroft. She was the lady behind the Thomas and Friends series. So that's an important um, addition to this style of packaging. And on the bottom here, we have this same sign, but with a little bit um, with some differences. It still says Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends made of wood, but now on the bottom it says for Friends of Thomas ages 2 to 102, and that is in contrast to the previous Thomas packaging, which basically said two years and up. And it's super interesting and weird to me that they chose the number 102, as if once somebody turns 103, if they're lucky enough to make it to 103 years old, all of a sudden, you, this toy is not meant for you. It's meant, you know, for the, for the uh, early part of your life, but not uh, the later part of your life, I guess. So that's just a super interesting inclusion. Basically, I think it's just supposed to be kind of a play on words, ages 2 to 102. Basically meaning it's fit for every single human being out there with the exception of very small children because... Who knows, little kids like to put toys in their mouth and, you know, in a very rare cases you might have a piece of a wooden train break off and that could become a choking hazard. So like the uh, first version we looked at, the back here is extremely plain. Um, the big change though is remember we saw on the 1992 version the bottom had some information on it. Now the bottom is see-through and clear and that information has been moved to the back. So there's definitely a lot more going on. Um, on the back here. This looked really plain. Obviously, there was a lot of empty space. Now that has been filled in. So there's a very nice a picture of Thomas that is very 90s-esque. There's also some learning curve information. Shining Time Station is still mentioned, but we don't get a nice logo like we did in the past. And then here is a really nice, important part of the Thomas Wynn Railway line. Basically, it quickly explains why this is a good toy to buy for your children. Not only does it encourage social skills, skills and hand-eye coordination. It's just a fun toy to play with. So as you can see, um, or at least the impression I get from this toy is that Thomas is moving up in the world. You know, the very first version of Thomas um, was sort of this kind of dinky small toy, but after a few years of great success, they've revamped the packaging, and now we're basically trying to sell to our customers why this is a good toy. So overall, like I mentioned before, this is my favorite style of Thomas packaging. Um, I was going to mention, on some versions of this style of packaging, you have a cloud up top here like you see here that has the name of the train. I guess that's another important thing to mention about this is nowhere on here does it say uh, Thomas's name. I guess you would just have to assume what character um, is included here. But now we're starting to get a, um, a very clear indication of who this character is. Obviously this is Thomas and we also get a pamphlet. You can see that there on the side. And what's really nice is the back side of the pamphlet is designed to blend in with the rest of this cardboard background. You can see the flowers there and you can kind of see how Thomas is roaming past a pasture there. So this is a great style of Thomas packaging in my opinion. If there was ever going to be a throwback to a specific year of Thomas packaging that I would like to see Fisher Price and Mattel do, it would probably be this one because it just looks awesome in my opinion. So again, the dates are up in the years, I'd say conservatively 1993 through 1996. Now let's move on to around 1997 to about 2000. So you can see we're in a we're doing going through stages of about three years a piece here and this um you can definitely tell there's a huge change in how this package looks um if the old package didn't look uh blue to you then this one definitely will um in the past we had take we uh the logo i should say that was used was just this cloud thomas the tank engine and friends logo now we've moved into a specialized wooden railway logo. It still says Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, but right here there's a banner that says, if my camera will focus, there we go, it says 
basically for the Thomas Wooden Railway system and is promoting that cl famous, lovely clickety-clack track that I so miss. So, um, some brief changes that have happened to Thomas. Um, he, you know, a couple of changes. He basically, he has a plastic um, boiler and a plastic funnel. The face is a little bit different. Um, some of the minor details are more refined. Uh, gone is the cloud, what I guess I'd call like nameplate or signifier of what the engine is. It's no longer a cloud, which I thought was really creative because it looks like smoke or steam coming from the funnel. It's replaced by um, a very key indicator that comes to define this style of packaging. And informally, this style of packaging, basically on the internet and on eBay especially, is known as the brown label style packaging because each of the engines came with this brown label that said we know what their name was. We also have an outline that is red that goes around the entirety of the packaging here and it really makes it stand out. It's a nice contrast compared to if this was just blue all the way through. Um, we are still promoting uh, Brit Alcroft there. I believe it says the Brit Alcroft company now and we're still promoting Learning Curve. So on the back Okay, now we're starting to get into the era of a lot of information being packed onto these toys. Let's take a look. Just a few years earlier, it was completely blank. Granted, most of the information was put on the bottom, but it was very blank and very boring. Even the previous generation of packaging, still a lot of gaps where you could put some information. Basically, they have filled all of those gaps in, and now we got a ton of information about Learning Curve, where they're headquartered, uh, where you can call for customer service. Um, this specific packaging on the back here is dated 1999, um, which is basically the middle of the road for when this packaging was produced. And basically this is all licensing info um, that basically says, you know, you can't copy what you see here, otherwise we're going to sue you. Interestingly, it's made in China. Now I want to look briefly at the 1992 packaging really quick. Um, I know of the very uh, first early versions of the Wooden Railway version were made here in the United States. Um, I guess the only indication on the 1992 packaging would be this address somewhere in Connecticut in the United States. There you go, right there, made in America. I should have pointed that out originally. But yes, the very early um, versions of the Thomas Wooden Railway line were made in America. Um, very shortly after that though, it was moved to China because it's cheaper to make things in China. So one thing I really like about this packaging is this banner that goes all the way around. Um, I love the color scheme, the yellow and the red, and just the simple white letters, the Thomas Wooden Railway System. Uh, the Thomas Wooden Railway System. It goes all throughout the entire packaging, and it's just kind of a nice reminder of what you're looking at. Um, I don't know, I really like this. Um, this style of packaging or engines, you know, from this era still go for a decent amount of money on eBay. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really nice. This is the style of packaging that I remember from my childhood, um, very vaguely, I should say. Obviously, I was a kid back then. Um, but yeah, on eBay and on the internet, this is basically known as the brown label packaging because that's pretty much what it is. All of the engines and characters came with a brown label. And very quickly, all right, it still says it's made from real wood. Remember, we've kind of transitioned away from this, um, I'd say, more realistic sign on a piece of grass to now just this label that says made of real wood ages two to 102. So we're still keeping up with this um, 100 year age range for some reason. So overall, I really like this style of packaging. Um, as you'll notice, um, as we move toward the present day, um, you're more likely to have not only seen the style of packaging that we're talking about in an actual store, but they're also just more common on eBay. So um, conservatively, I'm guessing this is from 1997 to about 2000 or so. And then this was the last version of Thomas that did not come with a name printed on the bottom. From here on out, um, basically any normal version of Thomas should say Thomas on the bottom and this is I guess we have one more generation where the widow's peak is still a thing but um, you know as the packaging changes so does Thomas and like I said I'm not going to focus too much on the changes Thomas has gone through hopefully you'll be able to just see you know most of them um, when I'm talking about the packaging so um, an important thing with this generation um, there is a pamphlet that has been, um, remember the color scheme on the old one was grass to mas uh, match the pasture up here. Now it's just blue. And if you can see it actually lines up there, you can see kind of the stripe 
and the gaps there, that's actually really smart. I never noticed that before. And this generation is also when we started getting consistent character cards. So you actually got a lot of, for lack of a better term, stuff in this generation of Tom's toy. Not only did you get an engine, but you got a pamphlet basically that um, you know stated and showed all of the different possibility of Thomas trains you could go out and buy. And you also got a character card. Um, sadly, both of those two things um, are no longer part of the Thomas Wooden Rally experience. So, like I said, about 1997 to 2000. Now, before I move on to the next, what I'd say officially licensed um, Thomas Wynn Railway model by Learning Curve. I want to show off this one right here. So for a very uh, short amount of time, Brio, which is a direct competitor to uh, Learning Curve, um, they actually did hold a license for making and manufacturing Thomas Wynn Railway toys. The big change here is obviously what Thomas looks like because this is a brand new company. But nonetheless, since I have a new inbox Brio Thomas, I thought I would show off what the packaging looked like. It's very different. We still have sort of a hilly sky theme that, you know, was prevalent um, on the first two generations of the Thomas packaging, not so much on this one. But what's interesting is we have like a picture from the TV show um, on the Thomas Wooden Railway packaging. And that is in contrast to the previous generations we've looked at with the learning curve packaging. Those have basically been um, artist renditions of Thomas in sort of a cartoon form, whereas this is like an actual picture. So um, on every single uh, piece of merchandise sold through Brio, Thomas would appear here, but then the name of course would change. So we still have some very important information here. Um, we see that this toy is meant for the two plus age range, Britt Alcroft being credited as well. Yeah, um, what's interesting about this packaging is when you lay it flat like this, Thomas is still level like he is here, but the packaging kind of hangs at an angle. So if it was hanging off of a peg, Thomas would actually be, as you can kind of see, he's tilting forward. So that's another big difference. On the back here, this is just very Brio-like. This whole design and the color scheme reminds me of, you know, the Brio stuff you would buy back then, and then especially um, the Brio stuff you can buy today. It shows how much or pretty much how little the Brio packaging has changed over the years. So um, the story behind Brio getting the license to manufacture um, a wooden railway Thomas train is a bit interesting. I'm not sure exactly what the deal was, but basically right after Thomas and the Magic Railroad in 2000, uh, Learning Curve became the exclusive producer of all things Thomas Wooden Railway. So on the back here, we still have more licensing information. You can see right there, it's dated 1997. So let's just say if this was the first year of the Brio range, I want to say this began in 1996 for some reason. I could be wrong, but it ran through the year 2000 because they made Thomas and the Magic uh, Railroad characters. Um, so this Brio stuff was around for quite a bit. However, I want to say it was way more prominent um, in over in Europe, specifically uh, the UK. I personally do not remember seeing any of the Wooden Railway Brio stuff here in the United States. That does not mean it wasn't sold. In fact, it probably was sold. But I want to say at the time, Learning Curve had a much bigger market share and were probably, you know, much more well known to the average Thomas consumer. Um, the thing with Brio, and it's a good or a bad thing depending on who you are, this is just a very Brioized version of Thomas. It looks like a Brio version of Thomas. So to me, I'm not a big fan of this model. Obviously, I think it's cool nowadays, and I love the face specifically. Um, but you know, it, it looks like a Brio train. And the thing that with uh, this version of the Learning Curve Thomas is it looks like, you know, it looks like Thomas has his own identity here. Whereas with the Brio stuff, he's like sharing this identity with all of the other many Brio trains out there. So yeah, this packaging is certainly interesting. It's kind of from a weird part of Thomas and Friends history for the fact that for some reason, two companies were able to produce basically identical um, Thomas Wynn Railway models that serve the same purpose. Um, and I don't really know how that went down. I would presume though that Britt Alcroft and Thomas and Friends made a lot of money because these two were basically competing for each other. And in the end, Learning Curve did win out. But I would presume that's why 
maybe that's why this happened. I'm just taking a guess here. Maybe Britt Alcroft and Thomas were like, you know what, we'll just kind of let these two companies fight it out and they'll have to pay royalties and fees to us and we'll make a lot of money. And then I wouldn't be surprised, maybe Thomas and Friends and Britt Alcroft eventually made Learning Curve the primary one, or maybe Learning Curve offered them so much money just to become the primary one. It's a lot cheaper to buy out your competitors or basically, you know, enact some sort of law or rule that says, you know, we can be the only manufacturers of wooden railway Thomas toys than trying to compete against each other and trying to fight over the same shelf space and stuff. So um, I thought I'd mention here on the bottom, the pamphlet is very, um, very, I'd say intriguing and very smart. It looks like Brio wooden railway tracks. So uh, currently I don't have a used version of Thomas out of the packaging um, but I'd love to just, you know, be able to pick this up and see how it feels and how it differs compared to this style of Thomas here. I will say weight-wise, this Thomas feels much heavier um, because even though, you know, plastic is used, I have some feeling there are some more metal parts of this Thomas. So, anyway, I thought I would include this because it is nonetheless a version of Thomas in wooden form, but it was made by an outside company. So, um, it wasn't made by Learning Curve, and it really doesn't go along with the whole Learning Curve saga that we've looked at so far. So, I thought I would throw that in there. But anyway, let's move on to the year 2000-ish to 2001 to around 2003, 2004. So um, there are some slight changes that you see from the previous version of Thomas packaging. We still have the red outline. Um, I'm not sure if it's just the lighting or if this is actually the case. You no, know I'm looking outside of my camera, it actually is the case, but there's more of a distinct um, color variation between these two stripes than there are right here. The big change here is that we have a new logo. It's a much more modern, you know, 21st century Thomas logo. Personally, I like this logo. I was never a huge fan of this logo just because I always thought the version that preceded it was a lot better. Also, if you look on the left side there, we have a new learning curve logo. This is what it looked like previously. It was basically spelled out. Now, it kind of looks like a ribbon or a button that's kind of been attached to the packaging. So, um, we still have an indicator as to who, uh, which character this is, but we've gotten rid of the brown label and we've moved into, I guess, what you would call the red label of Thomas and Friends. And for the first time, Thomas has a name on the bottom, which is really important for kids trying to figure out, you know, which engine is which. And also, Thomas went through a bit of an upgrade here. Um, his face is bigger. There were some other changes. Um, this is, a, um, I believe, you know, this version of Thomas without the red stripes on his boiler was only made for, I want to say, only a year or two. So there was another, ver the next version of Thomas will look pretty much identical to this, but it'll just have uh, red stripes on his boiler. So the back of the packaging looks different as well. Again, it's just more of a modernization of Thomas. They flip-flop the logo. Um, we seem, we, there's just a lot more copyright information and legal stuff that these companies are having to put on their toys nowadays compared to basically 10 years ago. There's a 10 year uh, difference between these two packages. Granted, some of the information's on the bottom, but it's still nowhere near the amount of information that you have here. And for the first time on the back of the package, we get a summary of what the Thomas Wooden Railway System is. It says, the Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway System is the perfect way for children to bring their favorite Thomas stories to life. Start with classic engines like Thomas, Percy, and James, then add other vehicles, some of them with special features. Collect them all and they're still advertising the character card feature as well. This is a really key part of the Learning Curve era of Thomas and Friends. One of the big things that Learning Curve was proud of was that their toys were unconditionally guaranteed for life. Basically, that means that this version of Thomas was so well made that it should not break, it should not fall apart, you should not throw it against a wall and the whole thing, you know, comes falling down in pieces, that sort of thing. Basically, if you had a Thomas version or a Thomas model or any other model from this wooden railway series and it broke like a wheel fell off or something crazy happened, it basically meant that that was not supposed to happen and that they would um, repair it or that they would most likely just send you a new one completely free of charge. So I always 
liked Learning Curve because they were basically saying our product is so well made that it is not designed to fail. Whereas, you know, with some other cheap wooden railway brands, it might be a common theme or a common problem to have engines break after um, some days of rough play. But that is not supposed that is not is what is supposed to happen with the Thomas Wooden Railway line. So this specific packaging is dated 2001 on the bottom there. I believe this is the first uh, instance where they've credited the Reverend W. Audrey. And um, some big information right there. After Thomas and the Magic Railroad, Britt Alcroft Productions or the Britt Alcroft Company became Ghislaine. So I don't believe, I mean, you might see credited to Britt Alcroft somewhere on here, but the company behind Thompson, oh, it says it right there, right in front of me, a Britt Alcroft company production. However, the copyright goes to Ghislaine Thomas. There's also a um, something here about Learning Curve UK. I'm sure that has something to do because, you know, different countries have different requirements for their toys. Um, so I'm sure that has to do something with that. We got a Barco here. I don't know what this lion is supposed to represent. Conforms to BS and then a number. And I don't want to presume what that means. I want to, the lion to me um, signifies something British. That's just a pure speculation. I have no evidence to back that up. And I believe this arrow is supposed to represent like a clean and green sort of thing. So um, we are basically 10 years into the Thomas Wooden Railway line, and we are seeing a lot of different changes. Um, I, personally, this is about the peak of Thomas Wooden Railway packaging, in my opinion. I'm a big fan of this packaging. Not so much a big fan here, but obviously it kind of depends on when you grew up. I think... You know, kids who are born just a few years ago are obviously going to like the newer styles of packaging compared to these old versions. They probably really don't like the old versions. They see them as old and out of date. So this style of packaging, I want to say it's from about 2001 to about 2003, 2004, maybe even 2005. So yeah, let's move on to our next one. And this is the very first instance of what um, some people would call theft-proof packaging. In the past, up until this point, uh, the style of packaging here has basically just been these flaps where it's been very easy to open. There are some stickers on the side that kind of seal the flaps inward. And um, this was extremely easy for kids to immediately open a train like in the car ride home and start playing with it. The problem is um, it's, it takes no genius to figure out that shoplifting would be a major problem. All it does, I mean, all it takes is like five seconds for you to just rip this open, force it open, and pull this train out and walk away with it. So I can't imagine the amount of money that Learning Curve lost during this time um, from just, you know, trains being taken out of their packaging and not um, paid for. So around 2005, I want to say, oh, this says 2006 up at the top here, but around this time, basically, Learning Curve introduced what people would call the anti-theft packaging, where there are no flaps on the side, you can't get into it super easily. Obviously, when you take it home, you can just destroy the packaging, rip it open, get Thomas out. But in terms of um, trying to steal this um, Thomas in stores, it would be a lot harder because this packaging is actually pretty robust. Um, when I was buying trains back in the day with this style of packaging, I would usually come along and take some scissors here and cut this open at the bottom and then just kind of pry it open and gradually Thomas and the pamphlet and the character card would fall out. So really quickly, it's like the same sort of design, just everything's been moved around a bit. The logo has been moved over to the side there instead of a more, I'd say, um, equal design here where everything's kind of in the middle. It's now been moved over to the side and we have this, I don't know what you would call it. It's more of an open peg um, idea there than compared to what you see here. So um, we also have a brand new learning curve logo at the top there. Um, it's gone from sort of a badge to it looks like a sticker now. Honestly, it's more appealing than the yellow one in my opinion. Um, but also, when it comes to the packaging, you know, we have some big emphasis. Hey, it's made with real wood, and there are magnet connectors. So I th maybe, you know, some parents were looking at this toy, and they were like, okay, I see, looks like a reflective metal piece on the bottom there. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Uh, real quickly, little bit of a um, change to the face design, little bit. Um, but the big change with Thomas overall um, are the uh, red stripes on the boiler there. So... 
like I said, this is the anti-theft packaging. And then this is the first type of packaging that really um, kind of uh, put the character card into main focus. Because remember, so far, the back of the packages have been kind of blocked out. But now we have a clear see-through packaging. You can see Thomas through the other side there. And now we get a look at what the character card is. And then this, I mean, this is a really smart idea. Not only does it show, hey, there's a character card included, but it also gives a summary of who the engine is. So if a parent's looking at this, say this wasn't Thomas, say this was some other random character from the time, they're like, man, I have never seen this character before on TV. I don't know if my child will like this character. Well, hey, you have a nice summary of who this engine is supposed to be. So that's, I mean, it's basically a double, pur uh, double purpose. You knock out two birds with one stone in that case. And of course, we're still getting um, the pamphlets. Some more legal information. Yeah, it's um, 2006, um, still made in China. We got customer information. So at this point, Learning Curve is still very dedicated to serving their customers well, which is always excellent. At the top here, um, we still see the Brit Alcroft logo, but now for the first time we see the Hit Entertainment logo, who was basically running Thomas and Friends at the time. So that, that's a big inclusion. We hadn't seen that up until that point. Um, but it's still credited to Britt Alcroft, and you know, there's still the part about the Reverend W. Audrey, um, and it you know, conforms by these basically legal systems and such. So basically, what you'll notice um, on the back of the packaging as time goes on, there's just a whole lot more mumbo jumbo and sort of useless information that doesn't really appeal to the average buyer, but it has to be there for legal reasons. So this is a nice um, package style. It's definitely more robust, you know, since Thomas is completely enclosed, you feel like you can throw this around and, you know, it could fall off a peg and onto the floor and a train wouldn't come bursting out. Whereas here, you have these really flimsy flaps that I'm surprised they lasted as long as they did. Um, you really don't have a guarantee of Thomas, you know, being able to survive a fall. Whereas here, this is very robust packaging. I mean, I can just toss it and you know thomas is going to be completely safe inside so this packaging was around for a number of years um this version is from 2006 but i want to say this was introduced as early as maybe 2004 or 2005. um so yeah i think the problem now though if we t if we start to see you know some changes that have gone on there's just an um, abundance of blue and red and not enough other colors you know for here look at the amount of color that is on this specific type of packaging you have the blue but you have like the brown and the orange of annie and clarabelle you have the beautiful green grass whereas here we're kind of losing the creativity and in my opinion the overall appeal and design of this style of packaging it's becoming more boring and more i don't know robotic it's just like oh yeah that's thomas the tank engine whereas here it's like I could see myself, this almost seems like an, an experience of itself. I'm looking at this style of packaging and it looks awesome. It's like, man, you know, is that from a specific episode? There's a lot more to be desired here than with this, in my opinion. Of course, you know, like, that's, that's my opinion. Who knows? Maybe some people like this simple design. Um, you know, and then, of course, somewhere along the line, I guess it was only present for that one style of packaging, but they got rid of the um, the wooden railway system uh, words across the packaging. So um, this was around for a couple of years, but a big takeaway here is this theft proof packaging. It's probably saved learning curve thousands and thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost and stolen toys. So yeah, all right. I'm just gonna readjust for a moment because this video has been going on for a very long time. Let's take, oh, I'm sorry, I just hit the camera, but I don't wanna start the video over because we've been going on for a really long time now. So this is the next style of packaging. It has the same shape as the previous one. We're still on the anti-theft packaging here, but the new logo looks really, really great. This is actually one of my uh, favorite, excuse me, Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway logos. Um, we're starting to see a little bit more color here, whereas the previous version was just blue and red. Um, we get some additional color in here. Um, in, and I like this because it's supposed to represent the actual wood that the trains are made out of. We also have a brand new real wood logo. And somewhere along the line, um, the, several generations back, we lost the two to 102 sign. But overall, this packaging is remarkably similar to what we just saw. Um, however, I, I, 
I personally think the inclusion of just like the yellow here and the yellow wood makes all the difference. It livens up this packaging by a lot, in my opinion. So let's take a look at the back here where we still have this excellent character card uh, summary. It's interesting, let me just read the character cards. There's some differences. The most famous of all the vehicles on the island of Sodor, Thomas the Tank Engine is considered by all to be a really useful engine. He is a cheeky, fussy little engine who was always eager to help. The most famous of all the vehicles on the island of Sodor, Thomas the Tank Engine is considered by all to be a really useful engine. He is cheeky. He is a cheeky, fussy little engine who was always eager to help. Actually, they're the exact same. Uh, the print is just a little bit different. So you can obviously tell I didn't do my research before making this video. Uh, they're exactly the same. The summaries are exactly the same. I thought they would be a little bit different because the print was smaller. So this is dated 2007. So we're actually looking at just a year difference here. But this packaging was around for a long time. Um, this packaging holds a special place in my heart because when I started my YouTube channel in 2008, all of the new engines were being released under this packaging. So this is really hard to believe. At this point, you know, 2007, 2008, this packaging um, represents the 15 year mark of the Thomas and Friends wooden railway line, which is pretty crazy. So let me bring out the original one we looked at. Look how much it's changed. I mean, even just the size of it, if I were to lay them down like that, I mean, you can see how much more shelf space this one takes up. But yeah, we've come a long way. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I want to mention. Just a lot more legal mumbo jumbo that's not appealing to the average um, Thomas and Friends fan or the average buyer. But you could probably, I mean, you can just make the assumption these are only a year apart. They're very, very similar with the exception of the updated logo and some nice extra colors. And in fact, Thomas here is the exact same. I mean, he's the exact same. So no changes on that part. Now we're going to move into a slightly different version of this same style of packaging. This one's dated 2010 on the back, I believe. So I made such a big deal, whoops, I made such a big deal about the anti-theft packaging, how this is very robust, it's hard to break open, basically unless you carried a pair of scissors into the toy store in an attempt to break this open without having to buy it, it was going to be very hard for you to steal Thomas out of here. But in some very select areas, like I said, this one's dated, I think, 2010, yep. In some very select areas of the world, this type of packaging was reintroduced. I don't know if Learning Curve had a surplus of this style of um, cardboard packaging already printed, and they hadn't printed the decal or the, de the decals and the details on it, and they were like, you know what, let's just use it and get rid of it. But I remember seeing this style of packaging in stores and thinking you know, kind of like what a step backward it was from this. In a perfect world, I like this packaging much more just because it's easy to get into the Thomas trains. And not only you can take Thomas out of here, but then you can also keep this packaging intact. Whereas here, unfortunately, unless you're very skilled at taking toys out of their packaging, you're basically going to have to tear the whole thing apart. There's not going to be a whole lot left. So this is a very interesting version of Thomas. I know for a fact that this style of packaging was way more prominent overseas, like in the UK, for example. For some reason, they reintroduced this style of packaging around the 2009-2010 era. My theory, like I said before, is that Somewhere along the line, Learning Curve had produced this style of packaging. They hadn't printed the details on it yet. They were like, you know what, let's use it all up, which is smart for, you know, trying to cut costs on everything. But again, you open yourself up to this fatal flaw of uh, people getting into these toys and basically being able to walk out of the store without having to pay for them. So let me see. Okay, we got a new Learning Curve logo. That's what I was looking for. So we still have this badge on the bottom here. Now it's turned into um, a star. I really like this emphasis on real wood, though, because that's something that in just a few short years we're not going to see anymore. Look at all this fine print. And the reason I want to say, you know, this was a lot more prominent over in Europe is look at all the different languages here. Um, I want to say, I remember seeing some very limited examples of this style of packaging here in the United States. Mostly, um, in my mind, an example of it sticks out as I saw a, um, a version of Lady 
from the learning curve era in this style of packaging. And I remember thinking, wow, that is so weird to see Lady in this style of basically open-ended packaging, whereas um, we had kind of moved on to this theft-proof packaging a few years earlier. So like I just mentioned, I won't, I'm you know pretty much positive this style of packaging was way more prominent over in Europe. Anybody who grew up around this time overseas, I'd love to hear, you know, if you grew up in England or France or Germany, you know, even somewhere else in the world like Australia, do you remember seeing this type of packaging? If so, what characters did you see and um, what year it was, especially, I guess that's really important, and obviously what country you're from. But again, it's basically the same information that we're accustomed to. Um, the copyright date is a big deal because at this point, the Thomas trains are all um, dated 2003 on their wheels, which is not extremely helpful for trying to figure out what year they come from. But the date on the packaging is always a big help because that is like the definitive way of figuring out, you know, where your Thomas model, what year it's from. So very interesting. In my opinion, it's like a step backwards because it's like the reason this package style didn't work is because People were, you know, the engines were too accessible. It was way too easy to steal them out. Um, but then for some reason they brought it back. And I want to say they brought it back in very specific limited markets. This was not a wide release thing. So the uh, style of the packaging, I guess the design and the artwork is very similar. I'm still a huge fan of the yellow here. I forgot to mention with the previous generation, you know, oh, whoops, here we go. This was kind of known as the red label. You could call this the yellow label because I think it's pretty obvious why. But <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that. Uh, super interesting. I'd love to hear your theories as to why they brought this packaging back when it was specifically removed a few years earlier because it was basically an easy way for Thomas to get stolen. So um, learning curve up until this point has done a fantastic job of displaying Thomas as he should be. Here we are, I believe this might be 2010 as well. It is. So here we go. The same year, two different styles of packaging, two same engines. So that's, uh, that's interesting there. So unfortunately, we're headed towards the end of the learning curve era. Thomas is still the same. Um, nothing really has changed there. From the previous theft-proof packaging, um, the yellow label has changed positions. It's no longer on the top. It's up here now. And we've gone away with sort of the cartoony Thomas as um, our logo, and we've just replaced it to a logo that basically up until this past year was still the Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway logo with some minor changes. Also, um, I forgot to mention this on the previous Thomas because this is sort of an anomaly because it didn't appear everywhere, but there's no character card and there's no pamphlet in here. So this is kind of the demise of that. And then here, this was a widely produced um, version of Thomas and its packaging and there's no character card and there's no pamphlet in there as well. So I love the character cards, I love the pamphlets, but basically they were cut for cost reasons, which is unfortunate. Um, and once again, oh I guess that's the same Learning Curve logo we've looked at, but Learning Curve went through a lot of logos in a short period of time. So um, that's interesting, there's a like a, a drawing of Thomas, which looks, whoops, I just knocked something over, let me try to find here we go. This is what the one I'm looking for. So this is from the 1994 to 1997 packaging. It's pretty close to the same picture. That's really interesting that they brought that back. Yeah, that's really interesting how they, I mean, they brought back a picture of Thomas, which is great. I just wonder if there's any major reason why they did that. So again, a lot more legal information. We still have the lion here. Uh, Hit Entertainment has a new logo. I'm pretty sure that was on the back of, yeah, it was on the back of the um, this 2010 anti, not, I shouldn't say anti-theft proof. Um, I guess that is anti-theft proof, and this is the theft proof packaging. So basically for this design of Thomas, there's a lot more yellow involved, but I feel like some character of Thomas was lost when they got rid of this nice... You know, definitely a cartoony version of Thomas, but I really like that logo. And now we're just going to sort of a standard logo. We know it's Thomas and Friends, but it's kind of nice just to see the engine that the merchandise is based on. Because obviously, you know, not every single engine out there is going to be Thomas. So, yeah, we went from a very, started to get sort of that classic 
Thomas Wooden Railway feel in terms of the packaging. Um, with this one, any, I'd say even, gosh, I have so many versions of Thomas over here. You know, I said how this, you know, was sort of robotic. I thought with the new logo, we started to get some sort of, you know, personality back with this packaging, but then that kind of went away with this version of packaging. So, again, that's just my opinion. Um, we are on, right now, this is the last version of the learning curve packaging. It looks remarkably similar to the one we just looked at. Um, this is one of the few packaging changes where there's actually not a whole lot of changes going on. The big reason is Thomas got a, uh, gets a facelift for about the first time in like 10 years. And oh my goodness, it's a horrible facelift. Um, his eyes are a bit demented. Um, that's not like the packaging getting in the way. That's just how he looks. Um, but yeah, Thomas received a CGI face in this era, and it didn't look good. So I'm very happy that this style of Thomas didn't last long. I mean, man, the backs of these packages are like identical. Except this one's 2010 and this one's 2011. You'll see that right there. So Learning Curve did a lot of things right when it came to making wooden trains. But, man, I tell you what, the CGI faces were a step in the wrong direction. Um, I don't know who approved that or what, but I'm kind of, I'm extremely glad that they didn't last very long. Um, I guess the only other major change is the size of the yellow um, nameplate up there. It shrunk a little bit. So this is a one-year difference, and then this was sold from 2011 to 2012. And 2012 was Learning Curves last year as the maker of the Thomas Wooden Railway line. However, um, another big company stepped up to basically fill the shoes, and that's when we move into the Mattel era, which is, you know, presently what, who is governing the Thomas Wooden Railway line. So, this style of packaging, when it was first introduced, remember, this is a brand new company behind this style of packaging. Um, when this was introduced, I remember thinking it looked good, it just looked a little weird, though. For one, you know, off to the side here, there's still that um, part that's brown that's supposed to represent the wood, but all of a sudden it's been replaced by the track. And I remember actually thinking, wow, that track actually looks like almost too detailed. Like it's, you're almost, Want, you want to look at the detailed track more than you want to look at the toy. And I remember I wasn't too big of a fan of this style of nameplate, but obviously it's grown on me. In fact, I think this version of Thomas packaging is really awesome. I remember when it was first introduced, a lot of people were a little bit skeptical, mostly because it just looked kind of funky. Um, but I think we can all say that it looks really, really good. The best part about the Mattel Thomas by far is the CGI phase. That looks so much better than the previous uh, version. But what's funny though, is they didn't update the picture on the back of the packaging. So I don't really get that. So let's see some differences here. Remember, these are two different companies at this point, although you could argue that Mattel and Fisher-Price, I, I mean, they basically took the playbook from Learning Curve when the company was sold and they didn't really do a whole lot of transforming or innovation when they took over the range but yeah there's a lot of legal stuff um let's see here okay there's the fisher price logo and for those who are confused fisher price is owned by mattel so you know when i talk when i say fisher price and mattel or just mattel it's the same company but yeah i th this packaging has aged well in my opinion i think it looks really good um, we still have an emphasis on real wood and the 2 plus. I mean, there's just, that's the beauty of looking at, at this point, the Thomas Wooden Railway line is 20 years old, and there's just some things that stay the same. There are, you know, there's the emphasis on the real wood and the emphasis on base, that says basically this toy train is meant for everybody out there. A very, in, uh, a very cool part of this Thomas is there's this um, little plastic slip here on the packaging that basically made it super easy to open. I don't want to tear it too much because I want to keep this Thomas in its box, but that made it super easy to open. Whereas in the past, you would basically just kind of have to tackle and wrestle this thing and eventually Thomas would pop out. So yeah, um, we still have, there are just, I mean, some very, very small changes in the logo, mostly in just the color, I think, yeah. But like I said, I mean, learning, or excuse me, Mattel, Fisher Price, they. They didn't reinvent the wheel when they um, bought the wooden railway line of Thomas and Friends. They really, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, 
up until the um, addition invention of Thomas Wood here, they were literally just using Learning Curve's playbook on how to run things. So yeah, um, this this is from uh, 2013, and this ran up until about 2015, 2016 era, and then we get, oops, this new style of packaging here. It's much bigger than the old one, um, not only in height, but also just in um, width. And that's key because this starts to take up, these engines start to take up a lot of space on the shelf. So in my opinion, there's just a lot of fluff here that you can cut out. You know, this is a very compact uh, version of Thomas in his packaging. And here we're, we have just this big cardboard thing. You know, in reality, we only need this right here. We don't need all this extra stuff. But this version of Thomas, okay, it's dated 2016. And the major change with this packaging, not only with the size, but Thomas also received a slightly smaller face. Um, and also, I mean, just everything's just been upped in size because basically you have more room and real estate to work with. However, I mentioned on the Mattel version, they didn't update the Thomas. At least they took the time to update Thomas on the back here. Oops. Yeah. This product contains magnets. Maybe that's, I mean, I'm sure there are, yeah, there have been more magnet warnings on the past ones. Um, but yeah, you see right there, 2016 hit entertainment not a whole lot of changes though the main change was the size of the cardboard and then just the tiny bit of plastic that they shaved off of thomas's face for some reason so most people would argue myself included that this was the last good version of thomas i remember when this came out i freaked out because this was the perfect thomas in my opinion and i didn't like this smaller face i thought it was such an unnecessary change but compared to what's about to come next this actually looks fantastic um this is really the end of the thomas and friends wooden railway line because from here on out beginning in 2017 um we are exposed to this the name has been changed it's called thomas and friends wood now there's a whole lot of changes i mean this is probably the biggest change in packaging from one to the other in one step, in one generation, this is definitely the biggest change in packaging since, you know, the 90s, I'd say from, oh, and let me pull out the uh, two, um, gosh, here we go. This is probably, oh, whoops, that's the wrong Thomas. This is probably the biggest change in the artwork packaging since this era. You know, we went from a, um, Sorry, folks, I've been talking for a long time. My mind's starting to wander. We went from this beautiful packaging here to blue, and then in a weird twist of fate, we're actually going in the opposite direction. We're going from blue to green. So let's say, you know, green to blue, blue to green. So that's one of the reasons why I made this video, because there's actually some really cool similarities and differences, obviously, between the packaging. So, man, there's just so much to um, take in. Um, obviously, Thomas looks really different. For one thing, he's facing the wrong way. I shouldn't say the wrong way. He's facing a different way. In the past, every single version of Thomas was facing to the left. And as I guess um, in accordance with how the Trackmaster engines look and how the Adventures engines look in their packaging, everybody's facing to the right. The face on this Thomas actually isn't too bad. It's definitely very childlike compared to, um, dare I show these in the same shot. This is a more mature Thomas face in my opinion. This is a more childish kitty face. Um, the name of the engines is written on the side, which is sort of interesting. There's a new logo. There's also a new track associated with this range, still two plus, and then we have this logo down here that I think is the the supplier of the wood. But obviously Thomas is missing a lot of paint. I could ramble on and on about this, but in a, um, a nice way, remember for a while there, we had the character cards on the back that gave a nice description of who each engine was. And for a while, I should say back in this 2013 era, we did get pamphlets for a while, but that was only a short thing. Um, we do get a summary of what each engine is like. So Thomas is described as the story starter because he's the number one engine. So this is very key for parents because if they don't know who Thomas is or they don't know who some of the other engines are in the range, that basically tells them who they are. Uh, Thomas still has his uh, name on the bottom. He also has some recall information. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, to be honest, there's not a whole lot of good I can say about this toy. Um, so I guess I'll just leave it at that. I mean, again, more mumbo jumbo. Um, yeah, so the FSC, 100% wood from well-managed forests. Maybe uh, Mattel was getting criticized for chopping down trees for these toys. I don't know. But yeah, there's um, a lot to take in. And I think in a situation like this, it really is just better to let the product speak for itself. Um, I think the, the main impression that I get from this toy is that it is just extremely, extremely childlike. Whereas you could definitely pass off some previous versions of Thomas as a very mature version of Thomas. This is not the case here, not only with how the engine looks, but just the, um, the artwork packaging. I mean, this looks like something out of... Honestly, it looks like those hills you'd see like in the old Super Mario Brothers games to me. Um, but it's interesting. We got the, uh, the green back, which is something we started with. So isn't that funny? It went from green to blue, and now it's back to green. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, this is really the main reason why I made this video. You know, when you take a look at Thomas packaging on its own, it doesn't look like much, but when you compare it to what came before it and what came after it, there is really a lot to decipher, uh, excuse me, decipher and take in. Sorry, I've been talking for way too long. This video is almost an hour long. That's insane. Thanks for, um, letting me ramble, of course, but let's get this off the screen and let's return to a much happier day in Thomas Wooden Railway history with something like this, or even, I mean, even, I really like this version of Thomas, to be honest. I love the CGI face. They nailed it. So that has been a look at the evolution of Thomas Wooden Railway packaging from basically 1992 to 2017 or 2018. As you can see, the brand has changed a lot in 25 years. Um, the amount of detail put into the trains, the amount of detail put into the packaging even, is extremely different. And it's just, it's crazy to think that we've just looked at 25 years worth of the same type of toy um, in, the, in all in one video, which is crazy. So anyway, you can probably tell this has been a very long video for me, but I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. I'd love to hear your thoughts and any other similarities you were able to unbox and uncover in this video. I think I'll close with... Um, like I said, my favorite version of the Thomas packaging. I just love the color scheme. I love how bright and inviting it is. Um, and I mean, that version of Thomas is looking pretty good too. So, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Pl be sure to um, leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite style of the Thomas packaging that we looked at. Which one is your favorite? And I'd love to hear any other similarities, differences that you were able to pick up on that I wasn't because I've kind of been an overload moment at the time trying to do, trying to make a video and trying to spot pl uh, play a game of i spy and i'm tripping over my words here so anyway i hope you guys kind of enjoyed this style of video um i just wanted to showcase in one single viewing how the thomas the tank engine and friends wooden railway system or merchandise line has changed over the years so anyway i guess i'll stop rambling thank you all so much for watching I really appreciate the support. Let me know if you like this type of video. I know there will be some people out there who will not like it cause, just because I included that. But it's this is a step in the evolution process. So I wanted to include it. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you've lasted this long, it's been a very long video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. And everybody, have a great day.